subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Scientists have discovered from analyzing data from the Chandrayaan-1 lunar orbiter that the moon is rusting. According to this new study, there is rust that's being formed at the poles of the moon, which is extremely surprising because rust formation requires both water and oxygen and there is no atmosphere on the moon. The explanation that scientists are offering instead for the phenomenon is unusual, giant in scale and as with most findings we're making in the field of astronomy of late, completely unexpected. In this video, we'll talk about the rust that's forming at the lunar poles, where the water is coming from, where the oxygen is coming from and what role hydrogen has to play in all of this. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Now we know that there is rust on Mars. Mars is red in color precisely because of rust or iron oxide. But Mars does have a thin, wispy atmosphere. It might almost be negligible, but we know that it's there. We also know that Mars does have water and even at times liquid water. The moon, on the other hand, is very different. Chandrayaan-1, which was launched by ISRO back in 2008, surveyed the moon for about a year using multiple instruments on board the orbiter. One of these was a NASA instrument on the Chandrayaan-1 orbiter called the Moon Mineralogy Mapper or MQ. It was an imaging spectrometer which surveyed the moon and provided the first mineralogical map of the entire lunar surface. Spectroscopy has been used for over a century as a scientific analytical method to understand the composition of an astronomical body or atmosphere or anything that we're studying based on how light interacts with matter and how different spectra are visible based on what kind of matter is present. It has been used to determine properties and composition of objects at a wide variety of distances ranging from astronomical scales to very microscopic levels. The ability to study and learn the composition of soil and atmosphere on faraway astronomical bodies remotely is a huge advantage that spectroscopy specifically offers. Spectrometers, which perform spectroscopy, are now a part of nearly every space and planetary mission. It is in fact using spectrometers that Chandrayaan-1 made the discovery of water ice on the moon as well. There is some conflict as to which instrument actually discovered it and which team was behind it, but the MQ is American. And the Chandrayaan-1 orbiter also flung a moon impact probe which contained the Chandra's Altitudinal Composition Explorer or CHASE instrument. This probe was flung from the orbiter and it impacted the lunar soil and as soon as it did, it displaced some of the fine lunar soil and exposed water ice underneath. As soon as NASA announced their findings from the M-Cube instrument about water ice being present on the moon, ISRO immediately said in a couple of days that in fact, the impact probe had discovered it three months earlier and they had only been waiting to confirm their findings. So there's a bit of conflict there, but Chandrayaan-1 mission was essentially the one that led to the discovery of water and water ice on the lunar surface and it is using data from the same mission that scientists have now discovered rust here. So this scientist, Shui Li from the University of Hawaii, who is very familiar with water on the moon because he's been working extensively on the data from Chandrayaan-1, decided to dig into why the two lunar poles are different from the rest of the moon in spectroscopy. When water interacts with rock, it produces a variety of reactions and results in a variety of minerals. The spectrometer had detected signals in the form of spectra or light reflected off surfaces and this showed that the lunar pole composition at both poles was different as compared to the rest of the moon. When Lee focused on these polar spectra, he realized that the spectral signature that he was seeing was a very close match with hematite, a form of iron oxide. But moon doesn't have liquid water. All the water there is in the form of ice. It certainly doesn't have oxygen. 
So how can there be rust forming on the moon? The explanation is as simple as it is grand. The scientists offer a three-pronged model to explain what is driving the phenomenon of rusting on the moon. First, while the moon indeed does not have an atmosphere, it does contain trace amounts of oxygen and this oxygen, interestingly, is actually from the Earth. We've seen before how the Earth's magnetic field works in another Pure Science video. And we also know that it is teardrop shaped and trails behind the Earth. Turns out that the oxygen from Earth's upper atmosphere can actually hitch a ride on this trailing magnetic field or magneto tail and can travel all the way to the moon about 385,000 kilometers away. This was actually discovered back in 2007 by Japanese scientists working on the Kaguya orbiter. This theory for the presence of oxygen fits because Lee and his team actually found more hematite on the side of the moon facing the Earth than its far side. But there is a catch. Dust is formed through oxidation, the loss of electrons. But there's also an opposite process too, if we can recall from our high school chemistry lessons, which is the process of reduction or gain of electrons. And one of the most effective reduction agents that should ideally prevent the formation of rust is hydrogen. Hydrogen is found everywhere in space, mainly because of solar wind, which is the stream of charged particles that flow outwards from the sun. These particles bombard everything they encounter with ions and hydrogen. Now the Earth is protected from the solar wind by the Earth's magnetic field and the magnetic field shields the Earth from harmful effects of such radiation. However, the Moon does not have a protective magnetic field. So there is ample hydrogen from the solar wind on the Moon, which should ideally be preventing this rust from forming. But once again, Earth's powerful magnetosphere comes into the picture. The tail, the magneto tail, has a tempering effect as well, whereby it blocks over 99% of solar wind from the moon during specific times, primarily during the full moon. This then leads to short time window intervals where the moon is protected from hydrogen and has a supply of oxygen and this opportunity can quickly be exploited to form rust. But not all is done. There's still the mystery of water. We know there's water ice at the poles, but the hematite or the rust was discovered far away from this ice. How did the water or ice particles reach the parts where rust was detected then? Turns out very interestingly, the explanation for this comes from an extraterrestrial process. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so it's constantly bombarded with fine dust particles from outer space. This is especially exacerbated when there are meteor showers or other such high activity events. But we know that even a single fleck of dust from space that strikes the lunar surface can in turn kick up a powder of fine soil. And this kind of fine dust forms a cloud that is actually permanently maintained above and around the room due to regular impacts from the outer space. This finding was made back in 2015 by NASA, but this offers an explanation for how ice particles or water molecules move to the parts of the moon where rust is being formed. The dust particles kick up ice particles below the soil and transport them as surface-borne water molecules mixing them with iron in the lunar soil. And furthermore, heat from these thousands and thousands of bombarding events of fine particles could actually be increasing the oxidation rate as well. More data is needed to understand this process of transportation of water molecules in detail, of course. However, fantastical as this finding is, there are follow-up questions. Scientists also know that there is rust forming on the far side of the moon where Earth's oxygen really cannot reach. How is that happening? Is this mechanism similar to how hematite or rust forms on other atmosphere-less, airless bodies such as asteroids? 
and also how long has this process been going on because the research team now thinks this has been going on for billions of years but finding more details about this will give us more insights into the evolution of our own earth moon system everyone's eager to find out answers and we actually might very soon the moon is in focus again for space programs especially in america for the first time since the apollo era and for the Artemis program, NASA is actually building an upgraded version of the M-Cube called the High Resolution Volatiles and Minerals Moon Mapper or the HVM-Cube. And this instrument will fly on an orbiter called the Lunar Trailblazer. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to The Print.